This is a brief overview of the Stratus LED's RGBW module. At its core, the RGBW module is basically just four of our standard LumiBoost LED drivers that are running a specialized firmware that allows them to communicate with the RGBW controller board. Data is sent between the boards using a customized version of the DMX protocol that we call LED bus. All four LumiBoost boards are used to drive one giant RGBW chip on board array. It can be powered off of any four to six cell lithium battery, so long as it can handle the current draw. When you first plug in the LED module, it'll boot up into manual mode. Manual mode allows you to control the hue, saturation, luminance, and color temperature from the screen and knob on the rear of the device. Press the knob to change between parameters, and you can turn it to adjust the value. Color temperature ranges between 2000 Kelvin and 9999. For the pure RGB colors, Turn the saturation all the way up and then cycle through to hue and you'll have all the colors of the rainbow. The light can also be controlled by any RC receiver that outputs an S-Bus signal, like this Futaba receiver. First connect the receiver to the S-Bus port on the back of the module and next we'll need to change the input mode. First do a long press on the knob and then select input selection. Next scroll over to S-Bus and click OK. Next, you'll be able to map the hue, saturation, luminance, and color temperature channels to different S-Bus channels. We'll just keep it on the defaults for now, and then do a long press to confirm. And then another long press to return. So now you should see the values change when you move the channels around on the RC controller. So now this is just set up with the default channels, but you can map hue, saturation, luminance, and color temperature to any channel on the radio. This includes knobs or switches as well. The light can also be used as part of a DMX network. Go back to the input selection page and scroll over to DMX. Here you can change the channels that hue, saturation, luminance, and color temperature are mapped to. Long press to save settings, and then another long press to return to the main screen. Here you'll see all the DMX channels displayed. They're not reading anything yet because my DMX connector is not installed. The two three pin connectors here are identical. Either can be used as DMX in or DMX out. This is the JST GH to five pin XLR adapter that we offer in our store. That can then be connected to any DMX universe and the light can be controlled that way. Once the DMX source is connected, you'll be able to see the values updating on the main screen. Here's hue, saturation, luminance, and color temperature, all through DMX. Now to control any number of lights with a single DMX source, you can simply daisy chain the DMX connectors together. Both will have to be set to DMX mode. And now both lights will behave identically. So this only works if both lights are connected to a DMX universe. But let's say you don't want DMX to be used as the input source. You can still use one module to directly control another. This gets a little bit more complicated though. To achieve this, we're not gonna be daisy chaining the modules together via the DMX connectors. Instead, we'll have to remove this rear plate and connect the individual LumiBoost LED drivers on the inside together via their DMX ports. So we'll open these up. So you'll notice that all four LumiBoost LED drivers are daisy chained together, starting with this controller board on the back of the unit. So we're gonna find the last LumiBoost in the chain and connect the DMX signal wire to that. You're gonna need some nimble fingers for this. So this will be our master module and this one will be our slave module. So we'll also connect to this DMX wire to the spare port on the last Lumi boost in the chain here. And then on all the slave modules, we can just disconnect this controller board because it's not gonna actually be used for anything. So this master module is in manual control mode. I'm gonna go back to the main screen and go to luminance, turn that up. And now you'll see that both LEDs are doing the same thing. And I'm controlling the slave by the controller board on the master module. So the slave is basically just mimicking the master. And again, this controller board on the slave module is now not getting used at all, it's off. There's a few other features you can access through this screen on the rear of the device as well. 
long press to enter the menu and scroll over to monitor. That will allow you to view all the inputs that could be connected, such as SBUS or DMX. You can scroll to see the levels of all those. Long press to go back. Click on system settings here, and we can adjust fan settings. The fan mode should be on auto therm. That bases the fan speed on the thermistor temperature reading. You can choose the maximum speed of the fan. It should be at 100 generally. The maximum temperature, that is the temperature that correlates to 100% fan speed. Here we have the minimum fan speed. Generally 10% is a good value. That's pretty quiet. And then the min temperature is the minimum temperature that correlates to the minimum fan speed. And we can return, long press, system settings, white balance. You can turn white balance on off. The SBUS data span, that's generally not going to be used by most users. DMX bit mode is where you can choose between 8-bit or 16-bit DMX. And if you're ever having any issues with any of the four channels, you can scroll over to monitor and then scroll over to four Lumi Boosts connected, select that, and now you can see each one of the four Lumi Boosts. You'll see how it says R01, you can press to select G, B, or W. And then you can scroll over to see all the different parameters and telemetry data from that Lumi Boost. If you scroll all the way over, you'll see that there are no errors right now. But if there are any errors, they'll show up here. You can see the temperature, the fan speed, and the watts, amps, and volts, as well as the dimming level. Through the LED bus protocol, the RGBW controller board sends output level and fan level commands to the LumiBoost boards. The LumiBoost boards send telemetry data back to the RGBW controller. This includes temperature, amps, volts, and fault codes. Here's a bit more info about how the RGBW system works for those wanting to make modifications or integrate it into their own custom lighting fixtures. Since the LumiBoost boards are running a specialized RGBW firmware, you'll need the RGBW configurator software to change any settings. To connect a LumiBoost, plug in a micro USB cable and connect to the other end to your PC. Either the PC or RGBW module should be powered off a battery to avoid ground loops. Each LumiBoost board is assigned a color address of either R, G, B, or W. Up to eight LumiBoost boards of a single color address can be added to the chain. If more than one LumiBoost board of a single color is added to the chain, its ID should be changed accordingly. This way, each board will be able to send data back to the RGBW controller from its own unique ID. If you need to change any of the LED drive settings on any particular LumiBoost, that can be done over here. You can view live telemetry data from the LumiBoost that's connected over here. So that's pretty much it for the Stratus LEDs RGB module. It's a super versatile unit that can be set up in many different ways and you can combine multiple of these modules to form a giant RGB LED array. Thanks for watching and let us know if you have any questions.